welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In last week's video we made an indexing plate from an old car brake disc. In this week's video we continue making the arm, the block and the plunger that locates into the indexing plate and holds it still on the lathe. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. Okay I've just finished off by machining the outside diameter of the indexing ring so that this is now running true to the spindle and the chuck. So I can take the chuck off and start with the second part which will be the arm that comes up here and holds an indexing pin. So I'll take this chuck off and that's the finished disc. And all I need to do is decide how many indexing points I need around this rim. I'll leave that on the chuck for now. On this Boxford and my brother's Boxford lathe there are two tapped holes. These are tapped a quarter BS Whitworth. And what I want to do is make something I can use the holes to bolt to comes up here so I can put an indexing pin into the the ring and this is what I've done so far I've just got a piece of aluminium drilled two holes that match up with these two so I can then bolt this onto the lathe and put that on with two bolts I've made a cut out here to miss the casting edge. On the edge of the casting where they've machined there's a radius so I want to miss that radius so this will locate fairly flat onto the casting. I'll bring this in. I've marked some lines on the part here. This top line is the top of the slide this curved line is when the chuck's on was the outside of the indexing ring so I know where the two parts come and I've marked another line on the top there about 10 mil high and what I want to do is machine the groove in here so I can slot a piece of 10 mil aluminium plate in and that will give me a platform for the indexing ring to work and I'll machine a slot across here so I can move the indexing pin which will fit into the holes in and out so when I have more rows of holes I can move it to the next row. I've placed the component in the milling machine and this line you can see here is the line that I marked on the part when it was in the lathe that's the top of the compound slide now I want to make a groove in here 10 mil wide and about 3 mil deep. I'm using an 8 mil cutter so I can control the width of the groove. That's 3mm deep. Now I need to make this 10mm wide. The next job is to drill two holes for two cap heads to come through to bolt into the edge of this and pull it down. Now I'm going to move along the slot
So I've now added this plate with the slot in. The slot in the middle is a 6mm slot for a cap head. So I've gone 3mm deep each side, now I'm coming in to make this 10mm wide. This is the second one I made. The first one I made a mistake, made the slot 10mm wide instead of 12 That fits on there, I'll slide in and out. I've drilled and tapped the hole in the back. So now this cap head will go on here to lock it in position. So I've reassembled it all, as you can see this is the bit we've just made, slides along there, a cap head underneath so you can lock it in position, and the idea of this sliding is because on the indexing plate you may have more than one row of holes, you could have three or four so you can move it along to the holes hole position that you want. Now in this part we need to make a spring loaded plunger. We've got this spring which needs to go inside. We'll drill this out nearly all the way through. A hole on this side and this spring should sit in the back there. So when you release the plunger it will push forward and keep it gauged. Now the spring I got out of a soap dispenser, the type that you pump and the soap comes out. Uh, whenever I throw those away and they're empty I always take the springs out. You get two or three different types of spring in them. Always useful. The next job is to mark up the centre for the pin because if I just did it in the middle of this square it might be too high, too low, I don't know. So I'm going to mark the centre line up. I can use a tool I've already set to centre line and just scribe a line across, which should be good enough. Put the tool in on its side. 
the ones you use, you just scratch a line. I'm using the back of the tool where it's sharp. Coming on to the end of the block. And just taking it along the block. So if I take the block off the end. See on the end of the block a line scratched on about there. That is where the centre of my bore needs to be for the plunger. Okay, I'll show you how I've set the, the chuck up. Dial indicator, and I've set the set the dial indicator so that you've only got one revolution movement and then rock the chuck to get the lowest reading just about there set it to zero wind it out turn it round to the opposite side wind it back in as you wind it in just check how many revolutions it is, that's one again Wind it back to the depth and then rock the chuck again to get the lowest reading, that's zero. So I know that it's in this the bar is in the center of the chuck from left to right. And all I need to do now is get the position from top to bottom. And all I've done on here in my Jacobs chuck I've just taken the end of a scriber put it in the chuck, that goes in the tail stock, move that in and it comes up to the line and you just alter the top and the bottom jaw till you get that line centralised with the pin in the Jacobs chuck and that should give you the position. So that's set up ready for drilling the hole. Just drilled it out to nine and a half mil. That spring just goes in, and the spring I have is nine and a half outside. That's a seven mil drill, so I can make the shaft seven mil. And what I need to do is try and drill seven mil right through the end. edge off the ball. On this side we've got a nine and a half mil hole and on this side a seven mil hole.
And now all I need to do is put a 60 degree chamfer. And what I've done for this one is set my parting off tool square on the compound slide. Then I've rotated the compound slide to 30 degree. looks a bit like a centre drill that's because I'm going to use centre drill to put the holes the index holes in the plate so this will follow the centre drill and locate on the 60 degree taper so the, the part on the end will just go in first then the 60 degree taper will line up and centralise it that should be spring loaded. The only thing I need to do now is put the thread in the end, 6mm thread. I'll turn it around to do that. And that fits into the block, spring loaded. All I need to do on the block is drill a hole through the side that's level with the bore, mill a little channel in this so that we can lock it in. Now this is what we've got so far. The block we've machined just wants cleaning up and tidying up. The plunger we made today and it just needs a handle making on the end so you can pull it in and out by hand and the plunger goes far enough in to it touches the chuck but it will go far enough in so that the 60 degree part hits the whichever hole you're on and we've got it the movement on this enough to put maybe three rows of holes in this indexing plate 
So in the next episode we'll be finishing off the handle and putting the holes in the indexing plate for the first row of holes. Well, that's it for today. Hope that was interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not subscribe? And we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.